footage was shot a little over a month ago when I got these brand new tires home to put on this old 8N. It's taken me a while to get these things mounted up, but in all fairness, I've been doing a lot of other jobs sort of in between and alongside the new tire job. The shop that I bought them from said that they would mount them up for me for about $100, which I mean really isn't that bad considering how hard it is to do. But rather than spend that money, I wanted to see if I could do it myself because it's a skill that I just feel like I should probably have. Now that all the dust has settled on this project, it's definitely hard to do, but I'm glad that I went ahead and tried to do it and figured out how to do it successfully. Today, I wanna to bring you guys along with me and show you the process, how we got from these old, rusty, crusty tires to these nice new tires on these nicely painted rims. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. This was the most simple and effective way that I could find to break the bead off of the rim. I just grabbed a loading ramp off of my trailer and a short piece of channel iron to help concentrate the load. After the tractor does the hard part, I can just use my body weight and sort of walk around the tire to completely separate it from the rim. And now the same thing on the other side. Now that the tire is separated from the rim, we need to get the tire off of the rim. The first step to do this is to spray everything down with soapy water. Soapy water is going to be my best friend in this process. Here you see me using two tire irons to start to pry the tire off of the rim. The first bite with the iron is probably going to be the hardest one. But after you get that done, the rest of them seem, well, at least a little bit easier. With half of the tire removed from the rim, it's now time to remove the inner tube. In order to do this, I'm going to put spacers underneath the tire to hold it up off of the rim, creating a small gap that I can pull the tube out of. Even when pulling the valve core out, it's pretty much impossible to get all of the water out of an inner tube. But luckily for me, I knew that I wasn't going to be reusing this tube, so I had an easier way to get the water out. To begin working on the other side of the tire, I decided it would be easier to sort of stand it up and maybe get gravity on my side for a change. After soaping up the wheel and the tire, I got another pry bar in there and went back at it. 
Now I'm sure that this is not how the professionals do it, but I found when I got right here to the end that just whacking the tire with a hammer was not only effective in breaking the rim loose, but it also made me feel a lot better too. And there you have it, and hey, it was still faster than driving this thing to town and watching someone else do it. Originally I was not planning on painting the wheels, but I put a pull up on Patreon and those folks decided that it was a good idea. And you know what? They're right, because there really is not a better time to paint a rim than when the tire is off. So I figured I'd better take advantage, because hopefully I won't be taking these tires off for many years prep work is probably the least fun part of this job, but it's all worth it in the end when you get to look at this nice finished product. The rims have had a couple of days to dry and now I'm ready to install the tires. There are people out there that can get this first lip over the rim just by wrestling with the tire. But I quickly realized that I am not one of those people, so unfortunately for me, out came the tire irons. It took some doing, but I finally got the first lip over the rim with only scratching my brand new paint job just a little bit. Next goes in the tube. If you're doing this for the first time, the main thing that you want to remember here is that the tube goes in only one way. So look at your rim, look at your tube, and make sure that your valve stem is pointing the correct way before you stuff it in there. With the tube installed correctly and the valve stem secured, I can lay the rim back down and grab the tire irons. This might be the most critical part of this whole project, and believe it or not, it may not look like it, but there's a lot of finesse going on right now. As I'm sticking the sharp tire irons inside the rim, I need to be sure that I'm not sticking them into the tube where I might puncture it, or else I'm going to have to do all of this all over again. Once I got the tire worked onto the rim all the way up to the top, I couldn't get my tire irons in the gap anymore, so again, out came the hammer to bring it home. And just like that, I felt a hundred dollars richer, and it was time to put this rim back together.
this tractor is sitting here on all brand new tires. I, I really never thought I would see this day. So now that they're on there, I think I need to roll this thing outside, drive around a little bit, just make sure that everything looks good. And assuming that everything does, we can let the air out of these, refill them with water, and then put the weights on. everything seems to be working good I think I can go ahead and move forward with this and fill these up with water and then put the wheel weights on now a lot of you are probably wondering why I'm using water and not calcium chloride because calcium chloride is heavier per gallon and it doesn't freeze so in certain parts of the country that's probably a big deal but here it doesn't get cold enough to worry about these freezing now yes calcium chloride is heavier but Water is free and I have an unlimited supply of it. So it, it's, to me, the trade-off is worth it. As I was editing this video, it occurred to me that some people might not realize why I'm putting water in the tires and why I'm putting weights on the rear wheels. The reason for that is ballast. When I have a load, in this case, a round bale on the front end loader here, it's gonna put a lot of weight on that front end. and. Therefore, it's gonna take a lot of weight off of the back end. And what that does is it's gonna hurt my traction. And if I get in a situation where it's a little bit muddy or a little bit slick, I might not be able to pull the tractor forward or backwards because I don't have enough weight pushing down on the back tires to give me traction. Adding water and wheel weights to the rear end of the tractor is a good way to do this. We're gonna to have to see though, once I get uh, some weight on that front end and kind of see what it does, I might have to add even more weight to the rear of the tractor just to make sure that I don't get myself stuck. So we're gonna go ahead and put water in these tires. I'm using this uh, hose to valve stem adapter that I got on Amazon. I used to have one of these and I don't know what happened to us. They work pretty good, um, but we're going to have to pull the valve core out of the valve stem and let as much air out as we can and then we can start filling these up. Not much to see right now, but I can hear it, it's working. If you're ever watering tires and you're just wondering how, how much more you have to go or how full they are, the trick that I found to use is I jack the rear end of the, of the tractor up off of the ground so that I can turn the tire. And I'm doubting this audio is gonna come through on the GoPro. But what you do is you just slowly rotate and listen. Right there, it started sounding different, so I know my water level's about here. In other words, I still have a ways to go. It's a slow process. One down. Get a good look at that paint job because I'm sure I'm gonna scratch the heck out of it putting on that tractor. But, you know, they are just wheel weights, so I guess it's okay.
that is a huge thing to finally get checked off of the to-do list for this tractor. It's really starting to wind down. This thing is almost to the point where I will call it field ready, but not quite yet. <laughs> now that the new wheels and tires are on there, we are that much closer to being able to put this thing to the test and seeing just exactly how much weight that front end loader can pick up. Until then, thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch. Get a good look at that paint job because I'm sure I'm gonna scratch a heck out of it putting on. Ugh.